In the past, most doctors used a one-size-fits-all approach to prescribing medicines. This means they assigned the same medication to people who have the same disease. Patients usually started with standard doses, and then doctors observed how patients responded. If necessary, doctors changed the doses or drugs by a trial and error process. One can see this from the picture due to the fact that person 1 is responding to a normal dose, while 2 responds to a lower dose and 3 to a higher dose. Sometimes, these drugs don't work on the patient and can make the problem even worse. Until recently, doctors didn't know why this was the case. Towards the beginning of a new century, doctors and researchers moved towards the idea of personalized medicine or precision medicine. This idea is that different factors contribute to a person's disease due to the variety of causes. One of the main factors to this are the genes in one's body. According to NIH Pharmacogenomics Research Network, there are over 3 million genetic variations which can lead to diseases such as cancer. The graphic here shows people with the same genetic mutation receiving the same medication. Learning more about specific genes and mutations in one's genome that can cause cancer is important as it will lead to the development of drugs that tackle the independent genes. This way, drugs will have a more efficient and positive impact on the cancer rather than the negative impacts of prescription medicine. In addition to this, the idea of microRNA and their roles in cancer is important to this experiment. MicroRNAs are cellular fragments of RNA that prevents the production of a messenger RNA that makes the protein. As shown in this diagram, microRNAs are important as they control the function of a specific gene. In conclusion, the damage of a microRNA can cause an upregulation or increased expression of a gene since the protein is getting generated more. The over-monitoring caused by the microRNA can cause a downregulation or decreased expression of a gene since the protein is getting generated less. To, to clear, gene expression is a process in our body that takes instructions in our DNA and issues it into a functional product such as a protein. The difference of expression can be shown in this graph as the RAS growth factor 1 sample is highly downregulated in comparison to the control. MicroRNA expression is also important as it is a key linker to show if a patient has cancer. One can find the microRNA expression in their body by conducting a variety of laboratory tests. The program created by me unites the ideas of prescription medicine and microRNAs together. This program uses R for a doctor to compare his or her patient's microRNA value to other tumors or controls. This program conducts a series of t-tests, makes heat maps, and scatter plots to compare the doctor's input to the data stored in the program. In addition, the program finds the genes the doctor would target when selecting or manufacturing a drug for their patient. This program also finds the 30 most upregulated and downregulated genes in the data set. From here on, let's move into the program. The program shown here addresses many different cancers including head and neck, kidney, liver, lung, thyroid, and breast cancer. For this demonstration, let's say the patients the doctor has have lung cancer. After running the first line of code, the user can input the number in correspondence to the cancer. For this specific program, lung cancer is 4. Now, the lung cancer's dataset is assigned to a particular variable. This dataset is borrowed from TCGA, or the Cancer Genome Atlas. This website is useful for researchers as it stores 33 different cancer data so scientists can observe and provide diagnosis and treatments for this cancer. This is, a, this is the data from lung cancer. As shown, the labels to the left are all microRNA names. The labels above the stacks of numbers correspond to tumor and control patients. 
The numbers are the expression of certain microRNAs. This set of code sets C as a matrix. This is important as it makes the user able to manipulate the data, conduct tests, and adding new data. The next couple of lines sets variables all tumors for the con column numbers that consist of tumors. The same happens with all controls. You can see that all tumors are 1 through 39 and controls 40 through 78. The following line sets variable f to the table that the doctor imports. For this case, I made a table that has a set of numbers of tumors and control samples for a specific microRNA. The next two lines that I will run combine the data borrowed from TCGA and the doctor's data. The execution of these lines again set D as a matrix and assigns variables all tumors and all controls. Now, all of the user's input and setup is done. One can go into analysis. The lines below show the development of a heat map. As the heat map pops up, I'll tell you what a heat map actually is. A heat map is a representation of data in the form of a diagram that shows colors. For this heat map, the darker the red, the more overexpression there is for the microRNA. The darker the blue is, the more underexpression there is for the microRNA. This heat map contains both the TCGA data and the doctor's data. The heat map is important as it gives the doctors a visual representation of what is happening in their patients and compares it to the TCGA data. For the next couple of lines, a table called stats is made. The stats show the mean, standard deviation, and p-value for each microRNA's control and tumor samples. A p-value is a specific value, 0.05, that proves a significant difference between a group of populations. Those less than the number are significant and those greater than are not. Creating the dataset stats is important as it shows which microRNAs are getting more impacted than the others. The ordered p valves are created as they order the row name number of p valves from least to greatest. The sorted p valves then finds the actual value of the p values in that row. Row top 30 then gets the 30 most significant microRNAs. D top 30 then finds the value for each of the samples in the particular microRNA. D significant then finds the statistically significant genes as the p-value is less than 0.05. The next step is to make a scatter plot between control and tumor sample. In this case, the tumor sample is HSA let 7 a 23 p and the control sample is HSA microRNA 429. The blue are the control samples of microRNA 429, and the red are the tumor samples of the doctor's microRNA. The correlation is also calculated, and it is about 0.28, thus showing the samples do not have a strong correlation. Next, we will make a heat map again from the D top values. This heat map is a lot like the first heat map, except here only the 30 most significant microRNAs are listed. Once again, 
Red represents highly upregulated and blue represents highly downregulated microRNAs. From here on, a bunch of correlations are conducted. The first one, which is correlation all, is between the top 30 significant microRNAs and other microRNAs. Next, the correlation TC is between the tumors and controls of top 30 significant microRNAs. Thirdly, the correlation AT is between all the samples and tumors of top 30 significant microRNAs. Fourthly, the correlation AC is between all the samples and controls of the top 30 significant microRNAs. The next data frames will be created to find the upregulated and downregulated gene. This was created by stating if the ratio of tumors to controls is greater than 1, then the microRNA is upregulated, and if it is less than 1, then it is downregulated. This step is important as it will lead the doctor being able to find the upregulated or downregulated genes of the microRNAs. From here on, the user then reads the gene file as a data frame and makes it as a matrix. This file contains a variety of microRNA names and the gene it is linked to. When you read in this matrix called target, one then inputs the microRNA they want to focus on. For this specific case, I want to focus on microRNA-130A3P. So, I put in 496. The program then spits out the gene the microRNA is attached to. This is important as it tells the doctor or researcher what gene they should target. This program attaches the microRNA and genes together. This shows the doctor whether or not the gene is upregulated. Target down shows whether the gene is downregulated or not. This is important as it shows how the gene is acting in the cancer and what should be done to the gene to return it to its normal expression. In conclusion, the R program I developed shows the microRNA relationship with their specific gene. A brief summary of the R program is conducting a variety of key tests, heat maps, and scatter plots to complete a visual analysis. Later, after this analysis is conducted, the program chooses if the specific microRNA compares immensely with other patients. This occurs in order to see which gene the microRNA targets and if it is upregulated or downregulated. The above program will help a doctor find out what type of drug they should manufacture and the function the medication should serve. The importance of this program is to lead the world towards personalized medicine. If this does not happen, then doctors will continue to use the one-fits-all approach in identifying a medication for a patient. This means that the doctor will give all the patients the same medication without considering their individual factors. As shown in this picture, personalized medicine differs in drugs targeted to a cancer. The diversity of medicines will treat a person more efficiently as it takes in a variety of other factors the person has, such as environmental, genetics, and lifestyle. Personalized medicine must grow or cancer will never be treated.